are you are you quoting one judgment and not uh, the other judgment which differs with this judgment there's a split verdict my friend one part of the same judgment can can i can i can i come in now Ye yes come by your on. own admission navika ji you have said the order was there in 1990 1995 so it took a particular principle to bring out that rule after 22 years 27 years rather to implement this rule so what was the motive behind ramakrishna ji to bring out and implement that rule when we speak about gender justice and particularly about the about the rights of muslim women don't these people who have lost one or two years because of the hijab controversy in karnataka deserve a better life better schooling for them or is it just to appease a particular community that the muslim girls who are wearing hijab to the schools are being penalized of course i don't agree with any type of conservatism in the islamic society right now but there is a difference between a hijab and a burqa even tajikistan has banned hijab right now in just one week ago so it's not a question how a society will see it but the society progresses with reforms within the society you cannot just impose a reform and say this is good for your society no navika ji this is not the way to approach abhijit ayer mitra abhijit ayer mitra when there is a split verdict to choose one part of the verdict and not the other uh, uh, observations in the order is the congress choosing its path of appeasement and the moot question here is the congress now dictated by the pfi and the sdpi are these radical elements now running the congress party and the congress party because they get support from these uh, 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 organizations have to defer to their interpretation of what's good and what's bad what's uh, the rule of a college and what's not we well, look the congress has become the new muslim league there's no doubt about it you literally had the karnataka home minister respond to a third rate fellow a jihadi who incited riots that killed 12 people including beds beheadings live beheadings that we all saw on whatsapp uh, respond to him saying yes boss and taking orders from him. now if that is the situation where a home minister is taking orders from an uh, non constitutional person forget an extra constitutional authority a totally non constitutional person what do you expect notice the string of lies that have been engaged in why did the principal bring out the rule book you you yourself are looking at the visuals out there there was a certain level of covering allowed you could cover up your uh, uh, people have forgotten this because uh, that hijab uh, controversy is old now they were allowed to cover right up to their wrist they were allowed uh, dupattas and things like that one fine day some girls decided to wear a full hijab and rock up at that school and he decided to take a line on it because it was strictly forbidden in those particular rules about what to do now both if if he didn't implement the rules you would criticize if you implement the rules he will be criticized now look at the if you look at the visuals that are playing right now this is a full hijab it's a clear violation of the uniform code so what is he meant to do he's just meant to ignore it and a split verdict means just that it means a split verdict it is there is no finality on it the high court incidentally ruled with uh, 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 the principle it was a two two judge bench of which the other judge also ruled with the principle so basically what is happening out here is let us be very clear about it just like the muslim league prior to independence was a puppet of lots of different factions uh, the landlords the islamists uh, the peasants etc etc sdpi is one of those pressure groups of obscurantist regressive groups that is uh, pressurizing the government and they will go to any length any breadth to appease them this is increasingly becoming their history I am the future that was born a hundred years ago. I am the purpose that emerged with India's independence to be a force for business that makes doing good our business. Towards an independence where knowledge sets us free to think big and achieve bigger, to take India to the world and the world to India. creating pathways of self reliance to stand for progress the planet and the people
towards a future made perfect and be a force creating abundance. Because independence is not a moment in history. It's a never-ending path to prosperity. Aditya Birla Group, a force for good.